25 years ago that I went to my freshman orientation. 25 years ago. And I was scared. I was nervous. Of course I was scared and nervous being the only six-year-old there. <laughs> today I'm still nervous. Someone told me they like my nervous energy. And they wanted me to do this talk today so that I can inspire students. My response was, I'm a little bit more perspiration than inspiration. I'm not going to walk on water if I do, it's all sweat. When I went to my freshman orientation, I went by myself. I didn't have my parents with me. I'm a first-generation college student, meaning that my parents didn't go to college, so I couldn't even ask them about their college experience because they didn't have one. I was that person sitting in the back row, trying to hide from everyone. Please don't look at me, please don't call on me. And in order to make me feel better, I was told all kinds of cliche stuff in my orientation. I was told stuff like this. You are the future, right? I was also told to spread your wings and fly. Same orientation though, I was asked to turn to my left and to turn to my right because one of us would not be graduating in four years. They're all looking at me. A lot of things have changed in 25 years and a lot of things remain the same. My freshman year, I didn't have the internet. I didn't have a smartphone. I had a box of about 20 CDs and a bunch of cassettes. That was my entire music collection. I had a typewriter. You asked your parents what that was. And I had a toaster. They took that away from me. And college, I realized right away, was going to be a lot of work. It was a huge culture shock. My university seemed so big, and so many people seemed to have it together. And I had no clue. I didn't even know what I wanted to major in. I picked history. How many history majors do we have? Oh, one of two of you, nice. <laughs> 25 years later, I still don't have a clue, but I have an iPhone that can type for me. It has the internet, and it has close to, you know, 10,000 songs and access to more of them. Now I just need one of you to figure out that toaster app. And 25 years later, I'm in front of the classroom. And in the classroom, I build lines, not careers. I prepare the whole person, and I teach students how to learn. My job is your learning. My job is your success. What makes me a successful professor here at NAU is having successful students. And for me, it's much more about process than outcome. I'm not the type of professor that's going to give you a lesson and then a test. I'm the type of professor that's going to test you so that you learn a lesson. My desks are often mobile, and my classrooms don't always have four walls. I want you to learn how to think. I want you to learn how to know. I want you to learn how to understand. So what's the most important part in shaping a successful college career? What really matters in college is who meets whom and when. Who meets whom and when. And yes, English majors, I looked that up, that is grammatically correct. It's the people that make, make the difference. So this is why I'm so very likely to go to a football game on a Saturday afternoon and go to a piano recital that same evening. I go to public lectures, I eat on campus, I hang out with students, faculty, staff, with my friends. And the reason why I do all of this is because I've made Northern Arizona University my home. And I encourage all of you to do the same thing. Make NAU home. It is your home. You belong here. So cross that boundary, break down that wall, and enter a space that has always been yours. So what do students want from the professors in the classroom? Well, besides A's and no tests. There was actually a study done about this very question. And according to the study, the number one thing students wanted from the professors in the classroom was respect. Respect. Now, I found this really interesting because I assumed, because I'm a college professor, that students wanted knowledge from the professors. But according to the survey, they wanted respect. Then knowledge, approachability, engagement, communication, organization, professionalism, and finally humor. But it was respect. Now I want you to note this is a two-way street. In other words, what do you think professors want from their students? Respect, right? So this is why it is so very important that you get to know your college professors. College professors are not scary. <clears throat> There's at least six of us here at NAU that are really, really nice. <laughs> and by the way, when you're emailing a professor, even if you've established a relationship with them in the classroom, it's always a good idea to assume we don't know who you are over email and to always use your NAU email account. 
because I'm so very unlikely to open that email from MileyCyrusForever at gmail.com. <laughs> so what else do we want from our students? We want you to succeed. Again, it's okay to talk to your professors. It's okay to ask questions, and it's okay to ask for help. We want you to do well. We're not trying to weed you out. So if you don't mind, I'm going to ask you to turn to your left and to turn to your right, because that person will be graduating with you in four years. <laughs> because you're going to ask for help. Getting help should not be a stigma. Acknowledge that you need help, because asking for help is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength. When I'm entering grades at the end of the semester, I cheer when I notice a student's earned an A in class. And it truly is heartbreaking when I have to blunt a student. I just imagine I have a borderline student, borderline CD student, and I look at my roster. Hmm, I don't know this person. Did they even come to class? They squeaked by, good for them. But what do you think they earned in my class? They earned that C, right? Well, let's say it's a similar situation. This person came to every class. This person asked for help. Dr. McCoy, I did not understand this. Can you please, please help me? Maybe it's test anxiety. Maybe I didn't fully grasp the key concept in class. But when I look at that roster at the end of class and I notice that student that's a borderline uh, C, B student, I think that student earned the B. Again, because they showed they were invested in their education. So for this talk today, I also asked for help. I did a survey on all of my social media accounts, on my Facebook, my Twitter, on LinkedIn, my Instagram. How, are, how many of you are on social media? How many are on social media right now? <laughs> just, just, yes, because by the way, whenever I'm in the classroom and I see students staring at their special area, <laughs> and they're smiling at it, <laughs> and it's lit up, I'm thinking, I think you need to go to the health center. <laughs> no, I know you're not chatting. So I asked my friends and followers to help me with this talk today by filling in the blank. And the statement was this, before I started college, I wish somebody would have told me blank. Before I started college, I wish somebody would have told me blank. And I got all kinds of advice, all kinds of really good advice. I got study tips, I got financial advice, I got credit card advice, basically don't get one. <laughs> one friend said, a breeze. Before I started college, I wish somebody would have told me, a breeze. <laughs> I guess the roommates don't shower? <laughs> so in order to summarize all the advice I got, I developed an acronym. We know what an acronym is, right? So the word is success. So the first letter of the word success is S. <laughs> so S is for success. Yes, thank you. <laughs> But what is success? Success is subjective. You have to know what success is for you. All of this is not so much about being a successful student as it is about being a successful person. Remember that success is attainable. You can absolutely be successful here. The one thing you can't be, and I hate to break this on you, is perfect. Again, success is attainable, perfection is not. Focus on progress rather than perfection. And focus on how far you come rather than how far you have left to go. What we don't seem to realize is that persistence itself is an accomplishment. So when you tell yourself you're a failure, that's not going to make you any more successful. If you tell yourself you're worthless, it's not going to make you any more worthy. You made a decision. And sometimes that's the most difficult thing to do. But you need to be present. And you need to try. And when things get hard, try harder. There's a chance, and I hope it doesn't happen to you, there's a chance that you might fail at something. I failed so many times. My first year of college, on my first paper, in my major, I received a minus 10 out of 10 points. I did so bad I lost points. And the professor wrote on the paper, please see me. Did I see him? No. And why? because I feared failure. But why did he want me to see him? Because he wanted me to be successful. Next letter is? You. you. You is for uncomfortable. You will have uncomfortable moments. But don't be controlled by fear. Don't always look for the shortcut. But be prepared to do hard stuff because growth, education, and learning are all about discomfort. 
education is uncomfortable. It's okay for you to share your opinions in class. It's okay for you to start a conversation, and it's okay for you to not know what to do. Take courses outside your comfort zone. And for many of you, this might be the first time that you do things on your own. It might be the first time you do your own laundry. <coughs> not for maybe. It might be the first time that you have to balance your own account. It might be the first time you walk more than a block to class. It might be the first time that you encounter snow. But know that one jaded professor's opinion about you and your talents cannot be the defining factor in your college career. But you will learn during those uncomfortable moments. My junior year, I had a class called History of Modern France. Sounds interesting, right? First day of class, huge lecture hall, there's about 30 students. Professor Pitstains hands out the syllabus. Somebody got it, thanks. Hands out the syllabus, goes over the syllabus, and then dismisses us. Second day of class, 15 students show up. In other words, he weeded out half of the class with the syllabus alone. Prior to the first exam, there were five of us. And after that first exam, two. And sometimes she didn't come to class. But what I know a lot about, history of modern France. <laughs> and why is that? Because I was so uncomfortable. And why was I so uncomfortable? Because it didn't even phase Professor Pitts things that I was the only person sitting in that lecture hall. So, what do you think about this? <laughs> Uncomfortable moments. Next letter is C. C is for chaos. Because if you're going to have uncomfortable moments, you're going to have chaotic ones. Life is messy, it's unpredictable, it's unfair, it's uncertain. Life is tough, life can hurt. Things will take time and effort. It'll require commitment and it'll require healthy decisions. You may want to stop, but it'll all be worth it. Chaos, embrace it. Another reminder is to believe in yourself and in your community. And while you may let these thoughts slip at times, it's okay, because you're only human. But when you're tempted to be mean to yourself or to be mean to other people, don't believe everything you think. Thoughts are just thoughts, and it's so harmful and so tiring to give so much power to the negative thoughts. You have to fully accept where you are today and who you're with. And that journey towards success will be that much more satisfying. Do work that matters. It's worth the pain. And it's certainly worth the chaos. Next letter is C. This C is for commitment. Commit. Don't do tomorrow what can be done today. Confront, challenge, and cross barriers today. Don't cram for an exam. No one practices for the big game, the big recital, or the big play on the night before. And you shouldn't be doing this in the classroom. The real world doesn't start once you graduate. It started. And again, don't procrastinate. I have high expectations for you. Commit. Don't be that student that comes up to me during finals week. Dr. Montoya, what do I need to do to pass this class? It happens. And it happens way too often. Don't worry about your, your grade during finals week. Worry about your grade week one. It's so much easier that way. And if something does happen, please don't be that person that comes up to me and says, well, Dr. McGuire, my GPA, it's just a number. Because I'll say, yeah, that's true. And so is your starting salary. <laughs> My senior year, I took a senior level writing capstone course with the same professor I had my freshman year, the professor that wrote the note, please see me. Prior to finals week, I submitted a draft of my final paper, 15 pages. He said, come later on this week during my office hours and we'll go over it. By this time, the senior year, I was a little bit braver and I went to his office hours. He handed the 15 page paper back to me. Page one, big red X. Page two, big red X, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Bottom of page twelve, he wrote, start here. At the end of his time, I left his office, tears streaming down my face, and I pulled countless all-nighters to basically rewrite a 15-page paper. I handed it to him at the beginning of finals week, and again he said, Come later on this week, I'll have it graded. Went to his office, handed back the paper to me. A. I asked him, so I wrote a good paper? His response, no. 
<laughs> but you learn how to do research. You persisted. You tried really hard. He said, we'll work on the grammar. That's the issue. <laughs> right? But now you know how to be a historian. Commit. Next letter is E. E is for experience. Do things. Meet people. Have human connections. Have fun. Have experiences. College, like the rest of our lives, is the time that mistakes might happen. Now keep in mind, I'm not telling you to go make all the mistakes you want to because you're in college. But when a mistake happens, you have to do well with that mistake. You have to learn from it, right? You have to learn from that experience. We often compare ourselves to other people, but we have to see other people for who they are. They're human beings, just like us. And in life, mistakes are part of the process. You have to take the luck out of it and have a competitive balance. Many people fail, not because they don't have what it takes, but because they don't use what they already have. Learn from your experiences. Learn from your mistakes. Because sometimes you might be your best teacher. Next letter is S. This S is for self. Students, do not become your parents. Do not become your professor. Who do you have to become? Yourself, yeah. I had a student at the last orientation asked why. I said, because you're big now, that's why. <laughs> it's okay for you to think, act, and decide for yourself. I've been doing orientation keynote speeches for seven years, and I've met students and their parents. And I asked the student what their name is, and mom answers, right? And I asked, you know, for the student what their major is, and dad answers. No, you need to answer. It's you, right? I'm the person you're talking to, and vice versa. Be yourself. How many of you are undeclared? You don't have a major picked out yet. That's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. And why is that? Because you're still here. You're still part of the process. You're still taking classes. Pursue what you want to. Explore areas of interest. And you never know where a spark will occur. There's so much in the world to see before choosing what you want to study. But don't wait to take that introductory course. It's those intro courses that lead to important paths. And again, you never know where that path might take you. When I was an undergrad, I worked for residence and housing. And I don't know if any of you have met res life people. They're kind of like the uh, orientation tribal ambassadors. They're always like turned up to an 11. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know. And I realized that that wasn't my path. So once I graduated with my undergrad degree, I left uh, residence life and housing, and I decided to uh, change my path to become a political scientist. Got a master's in political science and a PhD in political science. Got my PhD in political science from a university you might have heard of, NAU. And again, here I am all these years later doing this, something I would never imagine I would do. And why would I never imagine this? Because believe it or not, I'm an introvert. I am painfully shy. You will talk to me one-on-one -on -one and I'm really awkward too. But you know what? I love what I do. So do what you love, study what you love, and you'll absolutely love what you study. Last letter is S. I have to be careful with this word because sometimes it sounds like a dirty word. So this S is for shifting. You got that? Shifting. Huh? <laughs> Being static in a dynamic world is a recipe for disaster. If you can't adapt, you can't succeed. The world is in constant transition, and you should be too. Change should not be feared. It should be managed. And sometimes it should even be welcomed. Remember that things will rarely work out the way you plan them. There will always be stumbling blocks, and there will always be distractions on your path to success. The point to remember is to persist and to develop courage, even when other people around you are telling you it's okay to give up, because I'll be behind that person saying it's not okay to give up. Please, don't give up, and don't be a statue. Statues don't succeed, they what? They get pooped on. <laughs> Hashtag shift happens. <laughs> 
So, we're told we live in an information age. And a lot of people assume this is what college is about, but it's so much more than this. So today and tomorrow, I want you to gather all the information you can. And while you're here as an undergraduate, get all that information. But the next step is to do something with that information. Put that information into action. And remember, someone can do everything, but everyone can do something. So again, on behalf of all the faculty here at Northern Arizona University, I want to welcome you home. I want you to learn lots and to love lots. Now, spread your wings and fly because you are the future. Thank you. <laughs>